Okay, here's a quick little review of what we did in class and then I'll do a couple of the problems that you guys can check and then we'll go from there. So first of all, let's look at the different things. So prime factorization is when you have like two, two, two times three times five, like only prime factors. Factoring is when you have uh, like one times 20, two times 10, four times five, those are factors. And then multiples are things like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So those are kind of the different things. Now, um, let's talk about LCM and GCF. Okay, so greatest common factor is always going to be equal or smaller than the numbers given. And in a sense, it is the biggest of those small things. So it's the biggest of the small things or the small numbers, okay? And these story problems are always kind of like a division, but it's it's how many in a group, but you have two different things you're dividing. So it could be, I have 50 cupcakes and I have 60 cookies. What is the largest number of platters I could make that are identical to each other? Meaning they have the same number of cupcakes and cookies on each platter. Now it might not be equal cookies to cupcakes, but every platter has the same amount of each thing. So you're kind of divvying this up equally and this equally among the biggest number of trays. So the greatest common factor is equal or smaller because you can't have more trays than 70 because you, you can't have 140 trays when you only have 70 cookies or cupcakes, right? Now LCM is least common multiple. It is always equal or larger number, okay? And it is the smallest, least, it is the smallest of the big things. So of the big numbers, okay? And least common multiple problems tend to be things that happen in the future. So like, uh, you know, like this bell rings every 10 seconds, this other alarm rings every 30 seconds, when are they going to ring together? So there's some time in the future that they're going to ring at the same time. So I could say that, my snooze or my phone goes off every 50 seconds. My alarm clock snooze goes off every 70 seconds, the alarm. When will they go together? So when will my phone snooze alarm and my alarm clock snooze alarm hit at the same point? So again, this is something that happens in the future and you kind of want to know when they're going to line up in the future. Okay, so let's look at kind of the different methods and then I'll do a couple. So um, one way to get the, let's look at GCF is you can actually factor them. So you could do one and 50, it's even, so 25 works. Three, these don't add up, so three doesn't work. Four goes in there, what, one, 10 doesn't work. Five ends in a zero. Um, six, and again, you have to check through the square root, so seven times seven is 49, that's pretty close to 50. Six doesn't work, seven doesn't work. And then if I do the factors of 70, I have one and 70. It works, it's even, three does not go in there, seven and zero don't add up. Four, if I divide by four, I get 30, that doesn't work. Five should work, it ends in a zero, so that'd be one with a 20, so that'd be what, 14. Six, two and three both have to work, three doesn't, so six is out. Seven works, all right, and then eight, the square root of 64 is eight, that's pretty close. Square root of 81 is nine, too big. So I only have to check through eight and eight does not work. And so for greatest common factor, I could find the greatest factor they have in common. And it looks like of all the factors, if I look big, 10 is the biggest one they have in common. It's the greatest of the small things, okay? Now, if we do prime factorization to find this, we would take 50 and go like five and 10, two and five. So prime factorization of this guy is two times five times five. And I'm not gonna write it with exponents because we're gonna do something with these seven and 10. 2 and 5. So again, 2 times 5 times 7. All right, so with prime factorization, we have a couple different methods, okay, um, to find, let's see. Oh, let me go back. Well, I'll just do this first. So Venn diagram, what do they have in common? They both have a 2 and 5 in common. So that goes in the middle. Extra 5 here, extra 7 here. Check to make sure you didn't make a dumb mistake on your prime factorization. So 5 times 5 times that is 50. 10 times 7 is 70. Your greatest common factor is these factors, these prime factors, which when you multiply, you get 10. So your GCF is 10, okay? Um, LCM, let's go back to this. So like if they're gonna ding in the future, it would be, you know, 50, 100, <coughs> 150, 200, 
250, 300, 350, and I just keep going out. And then 70, 140, 210, 280. Oh, let's see, 350, I think. Okay, so it looks like the, again, this is the list of all the big things, right? And it's the smallest of the big things. So it's the first time that they hit, which is 350. That's your LCM, okay? So greatest common factor is this guy. Now, if we're gonna do greatest common factor, if we're gonna do LCM for this problem with the same Venn diagram, the LCM is all of these multiplied. So it'd be the 10 that I have from the middle times the five times the seven. And notice that's 350, that's your LCM, okay? All right, so some other methods to find either the GCF or LCM using prime factorization. So this is kind of the list out method when you list them all, list them all. This is using a Venn diagram. The other thing you could do is do the lineup method. So I could take my 50, which is this one, and I could take my 70. The seven doesn't line up, but the two and the five do. They have those in common. So you line up what they have in common. What they have common, again, only one of them comes down because the reason you line them up is to get rid of repeats. So what they have in common, this is your GCF. So GCF is, GCF is 10. All right, and then if they all come down, so the ones they have in common times the ones they don't, right, that would be 35 times 10. So LCM is all of them. So if I take all of these, then I get my LCM 350. And then the other thing we talked about class is kind of the wedding cake or the birthday cake method. Um, a lot of people call this the slide method or increasing primes. But I start with two. Two goes into this, what, 25 and what, 35. And then three doesn't work, two's done, three doesn't work. Then I try the next prime. So I'm going in ascending order of primes. This goes in there five and that goes in there seven. And there's nothing that five and seven have in common besides a one. So again, in this method, your GCF is here. There's your 10. And then the LCM is the L shape is this guy, okay? Which is 25 times, oh, no, no man. 25 times 14, probably be easier to do 10 times 35 um, for mental math. So those are some methods, all right? Um, again, if you have three things, that kind of changes things. All right, go ahead and try number two and three in the assignment. So try number two and three, see how those go and label your answers. And then I will pause and then I'll go ahead and do those two for you. Okay, let's look at number three. Um, first of all, or sorry, number two, I know it's an LCM problem because it's happening in the future. These lights are blinking and eventually sometime in the future, they are going to blink together. So the answer has to be equal or larger than both of the numbers that are given. This is LCM, it's happening in the future. So the list out method is just, you know, 18, 36, keep adding 18. Oh, did I mess up there? Nope, I think I'm okay. Over and over and over again. And then 15, 30, keep adding 15 over and over again. And you want the least common multiple. So least common multiple is the smallest of the big things. So what is the smallest of the big things? It looks like the first thing they have in common is 90. They'll have infinite many things in common. We want the first of those, okay? So 90 is the LCM. So it's like how many seconds? It would be 90 seconds. Now, if we use uh, prime factorization, I went ahead and did the prime factorization. Look what they have in common. Okay, they both have a three in common, so I'm gonna put that in the middle. And again, Venn diagram gets rid of double counting, so I just write the three once. The 18 has an extra two and three, and this has a five. And again, check. Three times five is 15, that's good. And 18, double check that circle. Nine times two is 18, okay? So your greatest common factor is three, and your LCM is all of them. So this is an LCM problem that's happening in the future. So I want two times three times three times five. So easier, probably two times five is 10 times nine is 90, and I still get 90 seconds. You could do the lineup method where you line up the repeats, so the three, and then put that five out there. Again, bring everything down, and again, you line them up to get rid of that repetition there. And again, 10 times nine is 90. So you're gonna get the same answer. Um, if you did the slide method, which again, only works with two. So if you did three, you're out of luck. Two doesn't go, but three does. Three goes in there five, three goes in there nine. Now again, nine is not prime, but five and nine are called relatively prime to each other because they don't have anything in common besides one. Your LCM is all of these, okay? So if you take 15, 
Tie. Oh, did I mess up there? How about six? Sorry about that. I'm like, that doesn't look right. Okay, three goes into 18 six times. Sorry about that. Um, so if I take 30 times three, I get my 90. So there's my LCM. And again, five and six are relatively prime. Six is not prime. It has three times two. But again, it has nothing in common with five. All right, let's look at the next one. Um, so they have coloring books, da, 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 and they're putting them in bags. Okay, so they are dividing these into bags that look the same. So they're dividing. I mean, they're putting these in groups. That's division. This is GCF. How could they have like 72 bags? They don't even have 72 crayons. So it has to be equal or less than the quantity they have because they're going to divvy them up. Okay, here I did factors, check through the square root, check every possibility, check through the square root. Again, three doesn't work. Two plus eight is 10. Three doesn't go in there. doesn't end in a zero five. Check through the square root, which is six. Again, do your divisibility rules or divide. All right, so what is the biggest one they have in common? Um, is it four? Is there anything bigger than four? I see a four there. I see a four there, a four there. And they all three would have to have the same. So I think we got it. We'll double check with the Venn diagram catch if we have an error. Okay, so what do they all have in common? They all have two twos in common. That goes in the middle of all of them. So I'm going to do 12. 18 and 36 and I'm going to cross those off because this guy has two twos this guy has two twos and this one has two twos now I'm going to look for what the rest have in common these two actually have a three in common 12 and 36 so 12 and 36 where they have in common is a three so I'm going to cross that off in common and these guys don't have anything in common so this three is purely in 36 this extra three and this seven is purely in, this should be 28. Okay, now let me check my numbers. Two times two times three is 12, that's good. Four times seven is 28, and then two times two, uh, what is that, nine times three. And again, this is two times two, it's not 22, right? These are two separate twos, I'll kind of offset them a little bit. All right, so my GCF is, I'm dividing these into bags, so my GCF is this. I'm gonna have four bags, okay? Now, the question, though, is how much supply is going into each bag? So that's kind of where these other numbers come from, or you could divide. 12 divided by 4 bags would mean 3, what, coloring books per bag, okay? And then the 28, if I take that divided by 4, right, 28, that's the other part, that's the 7, so that would be 7 markers. And then I could take my 36 divided by 4, which is my 9. You can see the other part of it. That would be 9, what, crayons? And this is all per bag, right? Like this is what you're going to get per bag. Now, if you look at the GCF of 4, let's look at the 28. Do you see that if the it's four groups of 7? That's your 7 markers because you had 28 of them. If you look at the 12 circle, again, here's your GCF. Four sets of 3. That's your coloring books. And if I cover this up, now this one you got to be a little careful here. Do you see how if I get rid of the four, it's four sets of nine? Because do you see how that three is, both threes are in that circle? So four groups of nine crayons. But you can also check four times three is 12, four times seven is 28, and four times nine is 36. So this Venn diagram tells you how many groups, but it also tells you the other stuff. Okay, but you can double check that in another way. Um, you can't really do the L method with this. You could do the lineup method though. So do I have space here? All right, so I have two, two, three for prime factorization. And then I have two, two with an extra seven. And then this guy had a two, a two, and what else? Two, two, and then a three in common with an extra three. Okay, your GCF is what they all three have in common. So I'm, I would bring down one, two, and times another two. The, these only two of them have it, so it wouldn't work for the GCF. So this would be two times two, which is my four bags. All right, hopefully that helps. Again, just remember GCF is when you want to divide things into equal groups. It's just that you don't have like, say, 12 cookies divided by four bags. You have multiple items, and you want the bags to be distributed fairly, like where they're the same bag all the time. And then LCM is something that happens in the future, okay? All right, good luck. And then you go ahead and do number one and number four for me to grade. Take care.